Okay guys, here we are at the wonderful, beautiful Road America. We're round three of the Gravel Trap Legends GT4 Americana series. We're about 26 minutes into a 55 lap race. Everything's been going pretty well so far. I've got pole position, a sent off a challenge from the Bloody Nine and then from Brett, who is behind us at the moment. Had a great little 15 minute uh, back and forward there. A couple of safety cars have brought that gap back. And then this happens. Esky Man gets past Brett and we are about to go into 28 minutes of utterly defensive driving. Now sit back, relax, and let's watch the highlights of the Rumble at Road America. So Esky Man's made that move up into P2, so he's put uh, Brett into third position, so now he's chasing down John Slow for the lead of the GT4 class. And he looks like he's got the pace as well. Late in the race, I think just ticked over halfway. It was quite clear by this point uh, what the strengths and weaknesses of both cars were. The Porsche definitely had the advantage on the brakes and through the middle twisty uh, section of the circuit. Down the long straights, the Mercedes absolutely uh, dominant. Got to its top speed uh, quicker than the Porsche. Not sure if overall the speeds are vastly different, but it certainly uh, felt like it got there a lot quicker than the Porsche could. And the good thing about uh, the left hand there at turn five is the corner does diminish on the outside. So as long as you stick your car down the inside, it's very hard for the guy on the outside to hold that hold that line. You will have to give it up at some point as the road kicks in uh, and the grass takes over. Really important for me to keep uh, a gap through the carousel. Uh, again, use the Porsche's slightly better cornering ability and up here through the kink as well. If I was able to stay ahead at the kink, I was always fairly confident each lap I could uh, hold him off uh, by the end of the straight once the Mercedes stretched its legs right out because he would inevitably catch me uh, down here. But again, as long as I was able to hold the inside line, I was able to keep him at bay. And this is what we'll see over and over again. Down the straight here, I'll just park my Porsche down the inside. Uh, Esky will just get ahead coming into the braking zone and we'll just use the brakes and modulate the brake pedals to keep him on the outside yes. and carry on. How, how did it go with John Slow here? This is why I was a little bit uh, confused because the leaderboards were changing. It was because Esky Man's having a go at John Slow and he's got also the lead of the race DJM right behind him. So we've got first and second for the P2s and first and second for the GT4s, all in the same track space here. Yeah, and it's uh, John Slow running extra wide out of turn eight. How good is downforce? And that compromised me slightly down the uh, back straight, coming to the can of the corner, letting those P2s through. And Esky has another run. Porsche's great on the brakes. Long way around turn 12 on the outside. Back up through Funder Valley, through turn That's 13. a distraction there, the P2s. The Bill Mitchell bend. And as the race uh, progressed, uh, Esky started to have a, a bit of a better run on the front straight into T1. He would try going left and right. Uh, I ran off wide a couple of times. Uh, actually got a track limit or two as well. Uh, ended up with four track cuts by the end of the race, a couple of which came when I was under pressure there from Esky. So it was something else to look out for in the last 20 minutes of the race. This would then lead into probably the best side-by-side uh, -side action I've had in sim racing. Uh, always great racing against guys like Esky because you know that they won't run you off the road. Huge respect there, give plenty of room, still good driving aggressively, uh, but knowing from my point of view that I wasn't going to get punted off by him, and we'll give each other plenty of space and hopefully make for some good broadcasting. Nice move here by John. He's still holding on, but he's now on the wrong side of the circuit. Look at the Porsche, how strong it is under the brakes. He almost, he's got it around the outside, Tim. He's still in the lead of this race. Too wide for almost half a lap around Road America. Absolutely insane. And get up into T1, he'll have a go on the outside this time. So I'll just hold the Porsche down the inside. And get up pretty level into turn one. And you tuck it back in, go for the over under. Uh, down into turn three. And you just tuck it back inside, knowing he's got a faster car down the straight, trying to get a toe off me, a better run, 
here out of turn three and we'll resume our cat and mouse down the back straight. So we'll generally keep the car fairly central uh, in the road and I'll just duck to the left as we head down towards the braking zone. He will make a run down the outside but again as long as I can see the front of his car and the braking and hear what his engine's doing I can modulate the brake pedal just to keep him on the outside because that road does run out on the right hand side there so he has to tuck himself back in. And now back under a safety car here with about 14 minutes to go and again always felt vulnerable under a safety car as the uh, Mercedes definitely has the legs as you see there gets past and the safety car is immediately caught again. I just apologise there. Sorry Esky, ran myself a little bit wide. And again that safety car has now just ended. Uh, we started off pretty much at the carousel. Again really key to get myself through the carousel better than the Mercedes. Just a little bit of a gap. Even two or three metres here or there makes the world a difference. And again through the kink here, you can generally get through there a little bit better. As you can see the Merc just drops back a, a little bit there. Which gives me just enough by the end of the straight into kind of the corner to keep him behind. And back to T1, Esky again, it goes up to the outside. John Stone runs really He's wide gone through there. Wide. He's going to be vulnerable now. Here we go, Esky man's having that dive oh. down, but no, he just does not have the brakes in the big Mercedes. Needs a lot of brake power to pull up in such a heavy car compared to the Porsche. And now seven and a half minutes to go. Just want it to end at this point. The pressure's been relentless from Esky for the last uh, 21 minutes. And it's uh, not going to let up anytime soon, unfortunately. I'm getting sweaty, getting hot, getting bothered. And just wanting everything just to be over. But Esky could be just sitting back for a few laps, just gathering himself, getting back into the feel of the car, getting the car back up to 10, getting the tyres right, getting the feel for the brakes. He could be making that last final push with only two or three laps left. And this time Esky does something totally unexpected. Um, he ducks to the left and then sticks himself down next to the pit wall, which was the last thing I thought he'd do, and he goes for a run the inside. So I'm able to get him on the brakes and sweep across into turn one. And all the while this is going on, Brett's having uh, a good run behind us as well. Staying right there with us. And then the turn three, a little bit of a friendly nudge there from Esky, which is all good fun. And away we go again. Two and three wide down the back straight. But he could be now vulnerable, as he said to Brett. He's really looking hard down the inside. They're getting squeezed. It's getting very, very racy here. Oh, I think Muckatuck was Brett was way out on the grass there, and Brett wasn't able to hold it up, pull it up. Uh, Brett got it back. He's sitting on the back still. Uh, three minutes to go. You can absolutely throw a blanket over the top four there. Uh, any little mistake would definitely lose a spot or two. And we're about to get some commentary gold from Tim as we come down into we're looking turn at a three five. Three-course meal here with KFC, uh, the Twinkies bears to wash it down with a rock star and finish off with a donut. Yes, exactly. And here we go again. Esky's trying to make it tough for John Slow. John Slow's making it tough for Esky. This is great racing we're having here at Gravel Trap Legends. Hope you're enjoying this battle for the GT4 victory. We've got two and a half minutes remaining plus Nova and he will drop all the way down to P4. As Bales will obviously get him, he's got a damaged car. He'll be lucky to get back to the pits. Lucky it was near the end of that uh, lap, but look at Esky Man. We've seen how up. strong the Porsche can be through this section of the track. And the Mercedes cannot do it from the outside. Yeah, they just don't want to get tangled either side by side, either we know. So the clock's finally winding down to zero, but we're not quite in the race. Got a couple of laps to go, as Darren in his P2 Sigma has to complete his final lap, and he's plus one. Another lap after this, so it's still plenty of time for Esky. And 
John's just knocked up his fastest first sector of the race and he's trying to defend from Esky Man. This is how fast these drivers are going late in the race. Onto the start finish line and this should be coming up for the start of their final lap. Stories, hopefully they've got enough fuel to get to the end as well. They should have more than enough because we have had those safety car periods where they've been able to conserve fuel. So this will be game on for the final lap. And look at that time, Tim, 0 0.026 seconds off his fastest lap. And we've got Esky Man on the outside. So race complete because that is the uh, P2 car just crossing the start finish line. So it's not over for these guys. They've still got this lap to go. But we can't underestimate Brett, who actually had a 2214.3. And pulls yes, right up onto the back of these two while they fired it out. That could actually be the fastest lap of the race for the GT4s as well, so he's flying. And that will give him a big boost on the target table. Yeah, he's going to have a look down the inside. I don't think Esky Man's going to yield here. He's going to go hard. But again, the track layout here at Road America just benefits cars holding it, holding position and being defensive because they can get that inside run. An outstanding drive by all of these drivers. It always gets my heart going there when you when that when we're watching John slow or Esky man and you can't see John and thinking where he's gone off he's gone off but uh, no he's uh, he's hiding behind the uh, the overhead bridge column as he drifts wide he's, that's the line for the Porsche obviously and that's where he's getting that pace but look at him go at the moment now Esky man has to be careful because we've got Brett. Having a good look now if he can get a good draft. And we can make attack on the back here. The Janetta is very fast for this sector of track. Uh, don't think they're quite close enough to make a difference here if they all keep it clean. Coming around now through onto the last corner, making the run up the hill onto the start finish line. So there we go, guys. That was the epic rumble at Road America. Really hope you enjoyed watching that. I know it was great fun driving it. Thanks to the Bloody Nine, Brett and Esky for a fantastic race. And thanks for watching. Absolutely outstanding drive by John Slow. Fantastic effort for the Porsche to be at the front of the race. I'm almost from lap one.